Hello, everybody. You are listening to Something Something Broncos. We are coming at you live uh, from Twitch, our post-schedule release spectacular spectacular. Uh, I am Jess Place, joined by Tim Lynch and Lori Lattimore Volkman. We are all contributors on MileHighReport.com. Uh, this week, uh, because it is the dead, dead, disgusting part of the off season, coronavirus aside, uh, there is nothing happening uh, in the uh, sports world. Uh, all of it, unless you follow Korean baseball. Um, however, uh, we we like to play a little game. Uh, our SB Nation mothership has has uh, given us a topic, and it's actually a pretty good little topic. It's what if? What if something didn't happen, or what if something did happen uh, with the Denver Broncos? Like, what if uh, the Broncos uh, moved to Alabama in the 1960s? They would be not the Denver Broncos. So. <laughs> That is, there's one topic. Uh, we have some ideas of, of things that we'd like to talk about uh, with regard to what could have happened or what might have happened or what did not happen. Um, but uh, since we're using the Twitch platform, we are encouraging people to uh, post in the little chat box there with their what ifs, and uh, and we'll talk about that what if as well. Um, so uh, while we wait for their what ifs to come in, uh, Lori, would you like to start with uh, a what if of your own? <laughs> All right. Since I'm starting, I'm going to start old school. Um, and I'm going to say, what if the Broncos beat the Cowboys in Super Bowl 12? And I think beyond maybe what it would have done for the franchise immediately, I think one of the biggest things that would have happened that would have been better overall for us is we would have so much more clout for that orange crush defense. And many of those guys would be in the hall of fame and we wouldn't have been having this conversation we've had for the last 30 years about why the Broncos get overlooked so often. I think winning that Super Bowl would have really done a lot for getting for putting the Broncos kind of on that NFL map, so to speak. So like Tom Jackson and Randy Gratishar and Absolutely. those guys. Gratishar, we would not still be hoping and praying and trying to get him in the Hall of Fame had they won that Super Bowl, in my opinion. Well, one of the things that would have, not to leave you out, Tim, would you like to say hello first? Because I, I, I'm really excited to, 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 to go into this topic because I love old school stuff. But I want you to say hello first. I, I was just thinking, well, first of all, hello. But as she was Hi. talking about winning that Super Bowl, I was just thinking about how special it was for literally every Bronco fan across the planet in 1990, early 1998, when they won that first Super Bowl. Uh, you know, it doesn't quite mm -hmm. feel as special if the Broncos had won that first Super Bowl, Super Bowl 12. Well, or any of the others that followed. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, just to go back to, you know, that Orange Crush defense, the, the, the Randy Gratishar, Tom Jackson, um, one of the biggest reasons that uh, Lyle Alzado left the Denver Broncos was uh, because uh, they lost and he was devastated. If you watch that, um, oh, I think it's the NFL Network uh, uh, special that they do for, you know, what is it? Like, it's like behind the music, but like player wise, I don't remember what the name of it is, but they did one for Lyle Alzado and his sister talks about how it just completely devastated him because he actually had a really good game in that Super Bowl. The whole defense uh, but, did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they turned the ball over how many times? Eight times? Eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and so, so a, a product of oh if gosh. they had won that Super Bowl, Lyle Alzado likely does not uh, go to the Browns and then subsequently the Raiders. Um, and he doesn't probably doesn't win, uh, the 1983 Super Bowl with the Raiders. Oh my God. Uh, he probably stays with Denver and retires a ring of famer, uh, for all time, always a Bronco, but that didn't happen. Wow. Way to bring <laughs> things down. Well, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, this is what Lando, if the guys. Broncos won, not, yeah, is now a good time for me to talk about how he how he died from cancer? Is that is that can I just is it now a bad time for that? I mean, if you if you bring that up, then bring up that he <laughs> bring up that he kind of trailblazed the whole steroid use issue and kind of made that a thing. So he did he did good work before before he passed away, but he did become he did. a raider, which you know. That's, the, that's hard the to get bad over. Part of the <laughs> right. Well, for, for which, you know, he spent most of his career with the Broncos, did a lot of really great things with the Broncos. But, 
He um, helped the Raiders win their last Super Bowl. Yeah, but uh, you know, the, I was I was four at the time. Right? Fame presence as well. You know, yeah. it's like if you embrace the Raiders, like we'll never forgive you. That's that's the lesson there. And that's a good lesson. We still love you, Chris Harris. It's all right. We went to the Chargers. <laughs> the Chargers. <laughs> eh. Go, go. But Cooper Carlisle, don't you ever bring your face around here again. <laughs> uh, Gerard Warren, who else? Uh, Javon Walker, uh, Ashley Lilly. They, they uh, do take over, take all the, you know, guys on the tail end of their careers. Pay them Devontae a bunch of money. Booker. Uh, Devontae Booker. There That's you go. Right. That's right. Oh. Boy, they just like to follow out, follow along behind us and just like pick up the scraps. They're just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. That's about right for the for the Raiders. We'll take them all. So, what about you, Tim? Do you have a what if? Uh, I guess my first one will be what if the Broncos never came to a trade agreement with the Colts for the for John Elway in 1983? Like, what would happen to the franchise if they did not get John Elway? Basically. That's well, you like, would have hoped that they had won Super Bowl twelve. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's like undoing like like the the seam of Broncos history. Like, forget exactly. a thread. It's just it's just pulling the seam ripper out and just being like, we're undoing all this, yeah. everything. All we would have been like like the Bills or like the <laughs> like Gary the... Kubiak would have been the starting quarterback. Think about that. Yeah. May- well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or Steve DeBerg, you know, like, well, uh, yeah, that's a, right. That's a, well, that's he a was actually still starting quarterback for a few games My that gosh. year anyway. So he would have just, I bet he would have stayed the starting quarterback. And Chris Hinton would have stayed with Denver instead of playing for the Colts. Um, yeah, that's kind of a, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, I bet we would not have uh, Garrett. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you don't have. If we don't have the single most important player to our team, you know, be of Denver Broncos. Garrett Bowles? Oh, you mean? Ah! <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Okay. Then, I, you know, if, like that question, as you said, it just unravels. It's almost unfathomable. You can't even imagine all the ways it undoes our history. Ways undoes. From literally from 1983 to 2020, because he definitely wouldn't be our GM. So, yeah, that, you know, that does undo all of history. So I guess that would be. Well, well it's a good question. It's just there are like a hundred billion answers to what <laughs> that would do to us. <laughs> it would change everything basically from 1983 on. But I mean, I think I think there there would be zero guarantee that, that not obviously not the, the Super Bowls that he won, but just not even the guarantee that the Broncos are contenders for two decades. Well, in everybody's career that he touched, I mean, you think about Mike Shanahan, he got, he he moved on from Denver because of all the good things that he did with John Elway. Uh, He probably never becomes the Raiders head coach, (laughs) probably never comes back to Denver, never coaches someone else to to back-to-back Super Bowls. Wade Phillips, too. Yeah, Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But uh, we probably don't draft Tommy Maddox. I mean, really, it's like everything, <laughs> everything just starts to unravel. Like it's it, it's a mess. Tim, your question's a mess. Yeah, I, we did get we did get a comment. It's like a flashpoint in time. We would like we wouldn't even know the Broncos probably fold as a franchise if we don't do that. Right? They become they become a cricket squad. Like yeah, it's, certainly wouldn't have any Hall happen. of Famers, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. No. Well, I got. I did get a, a much easier question in chat. This is what if Doomerville sacks Joe Flacco? Because they were not worried about Raheem Moore, right? Yeah, right. right. Well, what if the fax machine worked <laughs> and we kept Doomerville? <laughs> I think the Broncos win there that Super Bowl. There are so many levels to these yeah. questions. We're going to be here until midnight wasn't it that on the Thursday. Fax, the fax worked. It's just that he was in line at Kinko's, right? That was the thing. He like sent it like three minutes late because he was because there was a line at Kinko's. Someone was having trouble printing off that's their, true, their kids' yes. birthday invitations. That's like, true. That can't be true. That's real. I can't. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. No, there was a line at Kinko's, and he's like, I, you know, How, have, why he, are the Denver Broncos having to go to Kinko's to fax? Well, a, 
the, the fact I don't believe is, this story. No, it's true. It's true. He was at Kinko's and there was a line and that's why he got why the thing. Why have you never done a I history post about this? I'm going to back Kinko's for the ever again. I, I swear. I swear it. I swear well, it, why would they have a fact? I remember like random silly stuff like that, and that that is definitely how I remember. Losing illness. That is, that's losing... definitely how you remember. That doesn't mean it's definitely how well, it happened. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spill the beans, but I may have been in front of Elvis Doomerville at Kinko's. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing though, if if they did if they lost um if they hadn't lost Doomerville, they wouldn't have went after DeMarcus Ware. And I think DeMarcus Ware's edition is one of the key additions that led to that super bowl championship so i wouldn't change that fact well they didn't they didn't go go after him immediately following that but no, they, yeah. they went after but sean he, phillips and then they were like whoa and, yeah well that was this, what if the broncos never drafted sean phillips <laughs> drafted. what if they never drafted von miller did i say drafted i've signed him from the chargers yeah i don't want to talk about not having von on the team because i like having von on the team oh my goodness <laughs> Not only would we have not won Super Bowl 50, we just wouldn't have been entertained for four years because <laughs> he's actually been the saving grace the last couple of years. <laughs> right? Well, remember in, going into that draft, everyone was super excited about Marcel Darius. And like, I, I remember being in the MHR chat room at the time. And, and the fact, and when it came across that the Broncos were going to take Von Miller, everyone kind of panicked because that was not kind of how things were looking going into this. Everyone was like, Marcel Darius or... Uh, there was another guy who also did that play. draft was kick ass. The 2011 draft might be one of the best drafts in decades, but if you look at when I looked at the draft, it was like pro bowler after pro bowler. It was crazy. Let me too. Well, what NFL if, draft results? What if the Panthers up. don't take Cam Newton and he's sitting there at number two? Oh, you know, Elway's going for that, which I'd be fine too. Cam was pretty good until he, you know. The started getting wasn't. injured and yeah but then we wouldn't have gotten manning i no. mean i know that hurts your feelings Lori, but <laughs> it hurts <laughs> well it does personally but can you imagine if we didn't have manning it it wouldn't be quite the same level that not having elway was but let, let me read close. off <laughs> let me read off a couple uh some of the names in the top 15 picks in the 2011 draft Cam Newton, Von Miller, Marcel Darius, A.J. Green, Patrick Peterson, Julio Jones, Alden Smith, and then some busts, uh, J.J. Watt, and Mar Mike Ooh. Pouncey, Nate Solder, Ryan Kerrigan, Prince Amu Kamara. Now a Raider. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I feel like the top half of that draft was so stacked. How many Hall of Famers are in there? I mean, A.J. Green and Julio Jones have to be in that conversation. J.J. Watt, obviously. Von well, Miller, knowing, for sure. knowing the Denver Broncos, we probably would have taken Alden Smith. Yeah. <laughs> like I was going to say, we, we got the best one. I mean, there's a lot of good guys in there. But when I look at those, even as biased as I am, I think I'd still look at it and go... Well, only one of those names has a... Super Bowl championship ring, so exactly. Right. And how many exactly. of them are uh, Pro Bowl MVPs? Well, Nate Solder yeah. has some, but <laughs> Pro well, Nate Sol yeah, but you know they cheated. Yeah, they did cheat. <laughs> Mark Ingram was in that that run running back. He's paired with uh, Alvin Kamara. Mm -hmm. Here's a Ronald good. Here's Wilkerson. a good. What if? What if the Broncos beat the 49ers in 2006 on December 31st, that final game, the one. Isn't that the one we had to win to go to the playoffs? 2006. Yeah. That was the that was the Jake Derek Cutler. Williams's last game, was it? Yes, mm -hmm. that night or you know, really January 4th. Yeah. yeah. Damn. I mean, well, all right, now you're the downer, Lori. <laughs> Blame Walden Cash. He's the one who asked the question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Vegas Vegas Deegan just mentioned Mark Brunel, 1996. I'm I'm gonna ban him in chat right now. <laughs> He's gonna be banned from chat. No, I'm just kidding. I hated that game. I, I almost I, I don't even want to talk about it to be honest. I well, I hated Mark Brunel. I had post. I printed out dot matrix posters. I, I effing hate you, Mark Brunel. You mentioned that. I did well, every okay. time. Right. Let's go back. Do okay. So so say say the Broncos do do beat Mike Brunel and the Jaguars. Um, do uh, do the Denver Broncos beat that Packers team? No. 
I think we're, we're talking about two teams peaking at different times. Uh, the Packers beat the Broncos 41 to six in the regular season in like week 15. Um, I don't think they beat the Packers that year, but the Packers were peaking in 96, 97, while the Broncos peaked in 97, 98. So, you know. Well, clearly they didn't have the defense in, in 96 to get it done. They did yeah. have the uniforms. That uniform would have been awesome. Uh, and was, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, that's a bummer. They changed the uniforms right after that. Like they uh, I think that's why they won, to be you honest. Think? Well, that's what Neil Smith said. He's like, I like those new uniforms in the uh, uh, America's game. They're okay. I mean, now I have a lot of nostalgia for them, like with the, the you know, the blue top with like the white pants, but like the all like the blueberry ones, like, you know, like they, let's, let's not that, just avoid solid colors. That alternate uh, uniform with the, the D on the helmet, oh, I, it, cause it's, I think it's because it's a darker blue on the, on the, the big D on the helmet. It's freaking gorgeous. I want that helmet instead of the one we have now. <laughs> What if the Broncos never got the new logo? They yeah, did. let's talk. Oh, and nine in the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, oh, that would okay. suck. I don't even want to say so, that. So, so I've got one. What What if uh, Brian Greasy never throws the interception that leads to uh, uh, Terrell Davis blowing out his knee? for basically the rest of his career. Didn't you tweet about that yesterday? I did. I uh, did. Uh, uh, yeah. SB yeah. Nation asked, and I was like, you know, that that is a big one. There would have been there wouldn't have been any argument about how great he was. I mean, not that there is now that he's in the Hall of Fame, but Yeah. Well he would have been in the Hall of Fame sooner because he would have had more Stats. Hall of Fame years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean and, and then those those early years after Elway's departure would have been a lot more fun to watch and but well, I don't know because then then you wouldn't have gotten the Mike Anderson, Atlantis Gary, you know, the, that whole Super Bowls. Oh, you mean just <laughs> regular sure. season gameplay? I liked those guys. I did too, but yeah. we yeah. waited. I mean, they weren't Terrell Davis, I know. Ruben Jones, I gotta I gotta get his name in there too, you know, just because we waited <laughs> 15 <laughs> years for another Super Bowl appearance. The longest drought in Denver Broncos history was from when Elway retired to 2013. Yeah. Well, in the Super well, Bowl era, I should say. Yeah, in the but Super at Bowl least, era. Yeah. you know, we had – there were some good years in there. Jake the Snake loved his era. I, I'll be yeah, honest. I didn't watch play. football from 2000 to 2002. I was not into Broncos football at all. That is unacceptable. That's, block that's block right. yourself from chat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was young, you know. I was going through my own thing. And football was not part of it. Oh, no. I got somebody in chat saying he's done. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah. What if That's uh, I got a couple more from from uh, Vegas. I hope I'm saying this right, Deegan. But um, what if Manning decides to sign with Miami or San Francisco in 2012? Yeah. Well, I think San Francisco wins a couple Super Bowls. <laughs> yeah. Because they had yeah. a defense back then. But you know if, and think like i don't, this might be a bad thing to bring up but if that happens they probably don't have colin kaepernick right wouldn't that have overlapped to the time he was there did they draft him that year i thought they already had him well they had uh, alex smith and then they they drafted him. By the way, Alex Smith's leg. It like, what if Alex Smith's leg? Oh, uh, don't even talk break, about that leg, like, dude. Then I would still have a, a lunch in my stomach. Like that, <laughs> incredibly. You, have you been watching that? I well, I saw. I, I don't want to see I again. I saw it online, and it's just like you know. I saw enough. Like, he was drafted in 2011. Another great player drafted in 2011. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, I mean he was. Oh, I mean, right. he, I wouldn't say great. I guess in NFL history, but just a really good player that played had a good career no i think yeah we'll, we'll call him an nfc champion why not yeah why not he's offensive mm -hmm. player of the year once so or twice i should say that's pretty good oh that well, was college football never mind okay i'm on his wikipedia page learning about you know colin kaepernick's well let's get it let's dig let's dig find us some uh... i've already closed it <laughs> oh all right so <laughs> well you got another one Lori. you got another I got, uh what is i got one from chat 
Let's okay, try. What, what if? Madonna? What if the Champ Bailey Clinton Porter trade never happened? Yeah, we kept... I was thinking of that one. That's a good one. I mean, in a way. Degen. All right. Like de- sure degenerate. It's... Okay. Sorry. I'm not sure that changes <laughs> a lot of. Because we didn't end, like I'm not sure that would change some of the Broncos like winning years. I think it changes the tone from a from a strong defensive mindset. Because yeah. if you think about it, we really we had the Orange Crush in the '70s, but when Elway was there, it was we had good uh-huh. defenses, but it was like this is Elway, Elway, you know, everything's Elway. And I think yeah. after he retired with Al Wilson and then Champ Bailey, that defense was kind of revived, and then Von Miller passed the torch, you know. Uh, yeah, took I, the torch from Bailey. Yep. So well, I 2005 think... probably doesn't happen. I mean, with uh, no. Jake Plummer. I mean, with it was it was when you teamed up, you know, Champ Bailey and John Lynch. It, it, that was like it, it, suddenly the secondary was was much better, <laughs> and and we were able to do a lot more. Um, with Al Wilson, and, yeah, it's um, that would be that would be that's interesting. I mean, we I would definitely you know hindsight is twenty twenty. You I, when you look at that trade, every there's not anybody around that says that Denver didn't win that trade. I mean, we absolutely won the that trade with Champ Bailey. We got the Hall of <laughs> Famer in the deal, you know. Um, yeah. But, but, if only because this the Mike Shanahan system produced just as much rushing yards as they did with Clinton Portis, so it was like they got champ Bailey and then didn't lose anything offensively. So that's, that what makes it a win easily. Yeah. Of yeah. course and it and helps the, Washington sucks. Always. Those, those Mike Anderson, Olandis, Gary Rubin drones years actually happened after uh, Clinton Portis left. So, um, or Cecil Sapp, we could throw him in there. Remember him? Remember Cecil Sapp? Warren Sapp's little cousin. <laughs> and I mean, little. Yeah. <laughs> get some random info in that brain of there yours. you go there you go that's, <laughs> hey that's why you got me on the show <laughs> you're holding your what if back because you you're really excited about one aren't you no i don't know i just like, i know which one really, you're excited you about really want to go digging around that far back i mean it's it's like we don't want to drive all of our listeners away like, <laughs> we could go into okay so in in the in the 1960s um uh, joe namath a uh, little known fact, Joe Namath was drafted uh, by the New York Jets using uh, a pick that the Denver Broncos had traded away. Uh, they traded a player, uh, Bud McFadden, and a pick that later became the first round pick of the 1965 draft, which should have been the Broncos pick, uh, to the Houston Oilers in order to get a loner quarterback. For two years, they got a quarterback, and then they had to give him back. And so they gave up a first round pick and a player. Uh, who was a defensive tackle, linebacker, offensive guard, and offensive tackle? Um, he was kind of he did it all, I guess, back in the days. This, this feels Broncos 1960s to me. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. really so, depressing me. <laughs> so we traded that player and a pick to the New York. Uh, to we traded it around basically. There, it's kind of convoluted, but that that pick became uh, Joe Namath. So what if we had never made that trade? Like, does uh, the 1967? Um, uh, Super Bowl one, uh, Super Bowl three, uh, go any differently? Does it uh, or not 1970, Excuse me, nineteen seventy. A uh, Super Bowl three go any differently with uh, because Denver probably would have used that pick and on maybe Joe Namath, maybe someone else. It didn't matter because picks back then never signed uh, with the Denver Broncos. I mean, if you think about like Merlin Olson or Dick Buckus, like they were like, yeah, thanks. No, I'm going to go to the NFL. But for whatever reason, the Jets, who you know are, were a reformed uh, New York Titans team, like they were able to suddenly entice uh, Joe Namath with a, a monster contract that that they hadn't been able to compete with uh, up till that point. And so, so if you think about it, things could have been well, different. Here's what would have happened. It's probably likely that whatever team Joe Namath did go to wins that wins that Super Bowl. Here's the thing: yeah. he wouldn't have played for Denver, though. The only reason no, the Jets got him Denver. was because it's New York. For one, so he's got well, the market. Well, they had the money. They had new ownership. Money. Yeah, yeah, they had the money to compete with the NFL, and so. But the Broncos would have had a first-round pick. So I wonder who else was. Who were? Do you know who the other players were in that round? It'd be fun to find out who we might have tried to get. I I <sighs> couldn't I couldn't tell you, and probably the better ones I probably wouldn't be able to. Uh, Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch. No, I, I have no idea. Like. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Joe Namath is almost eighty. 
I know he's selling uh, insurance now, like the the Colonial Pen. I see I see his commercials all over cable news. So he wasn't <laughs> even the first overall pick in the NFL draft. He was the twelfth overall pick. Oh, there um, you go. Who picked him in the NFL? So the Broncos could have gotten. Oh, here's. Oh, you got your your history wrong, Jess. No. Yes, you did. Laid on me. Joe yeah. Namath was picked number one overall by the Jets. However, yeah. the Broncos traded their fourth pick to the Jets, who selected fullback Tom Nowatsky. No, it's it go it, okay because see they traded with the Oilers, and then the oil that's the Oilers pick that you're looking yeah. at. I'm on Wikipedia right now. I got it right here. We could have gotten Gale Sayers. The, the Chiefs, <laughs> oh. the Chiefs tried to get him, but he went to. Oh, round two, they tried to draft Dick Butkus, but didn't get him. Here, I'll and you know we I can uh, tweet this out after the show. There, there's if you want to follow the convoluted nature of what of how <laughs> it happened, um, because Jackie Lee, the quarterback that they traded for, came from the Houston Oilers, and so. So it's they packaged that pick and then that pick got flipped around and it became Joe Namath. They wouldn't have gotten Joe Namath without that trade. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm tired. Um, Be tired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any more from the crowd? Um, what if the hand of God reached down and blessed the Broncos in 1990? How bad do they still lose Super Bowl? <laughs> 24 that, that, that's like the uh, the old saturday night live like how many many ditkas would it take to win you know for the beers you know it, it's like even if the, even if even if god smiled upon the broncos I, they still would have lost like 55 to 18 yeah <laughs> yeah or what about you know what if um al wilson doesn't doesn't get hurt or have well then the trade with the giants probably goes through <laughs> well, the the Broncos wouldn't. Al Wilson Wilson wouldn't have had a falling out with Mike Shanahan over all the the handling of his injury. So I don't think he gets yeah. traded. He he would actually be in the Ring of Fame right now. He should be in the Ring of Fame right now anyway. I he'll, agree. He'll get in. He'll get in. It's, he it's, should have gotten in this last year, or maybe not this last year because they did. Um. Uh. <laughs> Who did they? Didn't they do Champ Bailey and, and you know, and did the, their Hall of Famers, so that's fine. But So he, I got more. You got more? Lay it on us. What do you got? What if the Broncos kept the three amigos, Mark Jackson, Vance Johnson, and Ricky Nateel, would they won a Super Bowl earlier? No, mm. probably not. I think the missing equation is a guy named Thrill Davis. To be honest, you needed, you needed the running back. Yeah, you needed yeah. somebody you could just you can just ground and pound. You needed the offensive line. You need the scheme. We still needed the defense, like you mentioned earlier. I mean, those... I mean, they had the number one defense in 1990 and lost 55 to 10 in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I don't know. The running back was key. Well, we had the number one <laughs> offense in uh, 2013, and. <laughs> Yeah, we lost 40. Yeah. But did they have yeah. a running back? The whole number uh, one no thing, Sean. though. You love no Sean. Come on. The thing about the number one, and I oh still feel gosh. this way even when we had the best defense in 2015 and we still did great, is that, that's oh all God. based on statistics and not matchups against certain teams. Because just because you have the number one defense, if you have a great pass defense, but they have a great running back, you can still look pretty silly or vice versa. So I will say one of my, f Oh, sorry. No, that's, that's all right. Oh. That's all, no, that's fine. I was just going <laughs> to, I just had a thought. I was thinking of my favorite Broncos game of all time, not Super Bowl related was the 1992, um, was it 91, the drive two against the Oilers. Yeah. When 91. Elway converted two fourth downs. And then I think it was Vance Johnson on the fourth and 10. He, he bounced outside and threw the, ugliest duck I've ever seen and he catches it and runs down the sideline oh, so I just went back then I lived in Northern California so I couldn't watch Broncos games unless they're on TV and it was playoffs so it was like probably one of three Bronco games I saw that year and I was just like ah! <laughs> that game I was driving home from from the Christmas break to college 
So I had to listen to it on the radio. And you know, it was nerve wracking. I And it was like, I was driving through Nebraska to get oh. to Iowa. So it was snowing and kind of icy. And like, I eventually <laughs> just pulled over to listen to the rest of the game. Because I was like, I can't take this. I could not listen to this game on the radio. What if that decision saved your life? <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm sure right? it did. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I can see now, and I, I can t- I can talk that way about Nebraska because I lived there for a year. And so, <laughs> Nebraska, I have a lot of really good friends from Nebraska. It's it's a beautiful place. You can see all of it, no matter where you are standing in the state. But it's so fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. I like the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, any more from from the the, the chat? The chat. Um, I have one of mine. Yeah, lay it on us. What do you got? What if the Broncos decided to not draft a quarterback in 2016? So they rolled with yeah. uh, T Sizzle, and things went the way they went. There was no Paxton Lynch. They'd be sitting right there in uh, Patrick Mahomes territory in the 2017 <laughs> NFL draft. So. Instead of Garrett Bowles, you know, trade up. Don't be envious uh, of a division rival quarterback on this podcast. Not in front of me. Hey, no. If he was a, if he was drafted by the Broncos, we would love him. Uh, that's a, and same with Delway. If Elway had been drafted by the Chiefs at 83, the Chiefs fan would love him too. So it is what it is. We didn't get Mahomes. He's now the best quarterback in the league. They won a Super Bowl. But you know what? The Broncos are coming. Well, the they got Drew Lock and like the track Todd squad. Blackledge, right? Isn't that who they got instead of LA? Yeah, you're yeah. right. They did. They yeah, did. Todd Blackledge. Yeah. Well done. Well, I guess Kansas City. Jackson Lynch is our Todd Blackledge. It is. <laughs> I, I would take Todd Blackledge over Jackson Lynch. <laughs> yeah. So. Well. I mean, yeah. So what if what if we did? So many. That? There's so many ways you could go with the Paxton Lynch thing because I feel like. Had they done what they should have done with Paxton Lynch and not tried to do a quarterback competition with Trevor Simeon and just actually gone through the growing pains of training him, you know, maybe maybe it turns out differently. This is, this is not a conversation I want to dredge up again. My God, like this is <laughs> this is the, the 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 dregs of the Mile High Report comment section. Like it's um... oh, I'm I'm sorry, I was I was on Instagram. What were you saying? <laughs> You play video games. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we, you know, but the, okay, just, just, just to do point counterpoint on that, and then we can abandon it like the Broncos retreat. Um, and they, he should be able to beat out a seventh round pick. Like it's not this. This was not like a a a, a true competition. It was it, it it was surprising that he was unable it, to seat. It goes. It goes back to the NFL isn't just about talent. You got to have the drive and the mentality to succeed you gotta you have to study you gotta work hard it's just it's it's not just a job it's like to yeah. really succeed in the nfl it's a way of life almost you just look at all peyton manning did was watch film all the time that was that was how he overcame whatever limitations he had physically i know what everybody's doing at any given time on, on a play that kind of advantage most people can't duplicate because it requires so much work um you know, that's why I love the NFL because it's not just talent that wins. It's it's also the hard work, leadership, coaching, all that stuff. Yeah. So it's probably why I'm not into college football because it's more college football is more athleticism, which is fun. I just like the the drama of you know the NFL. Yeah, well, I mean, it's exactly why. Why are you sad to say that? Like you're like. <laughs> Why? It's like your love. Well, like you just, you're afraid that it's not going to happen this year, aren't you? Like, is that is that what it, you're like? I just love it so much. What are you talking about? You're just. <laughs> I, I just said that because <laughs> people are wrote. so they get so they love college football, and if I you know say something bad about college football, I'm not saying anything bad. I just happen to love the NFL game. You know, college football is fine. You love it. That's great. Good for you. I was just trying to be non. You know. Your game sucks compared to my game, kind of. It's true though in the NFL that you definitely have a little more chess playing from the coaching. You know, it's the the coaches have to be a lot more um, savvy with how with how they're playing another team, and film becomes a really big deal. 
film breakdown. You know, that would be a good question. Like, what if what if we had actually um, hired Kubi- um, not Kubiak, but Kyle Shanahan instead of oh. Vance Joseph? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Yeah. Whoop. Oops. That, that whole thing, that was just a disaster. From the Sergio dip, you know, he's having the time of his life. Like, you just like from that moment, it's like, I just kind of like, like yeah. <laughs> that was like the moment when it went downhill. Look, I like our coaching staff now. The Broncos got, you know, they're on their way back up. It's, you know, it is what it is. Right. And that's the thing. We, you know, we wouldn't be here with with this group. But... We no longer have to worry about having the longest non shutout streak in the NFL history. We don't have to worry about <laughs> going forty years without back to back ten loss seasons. That's all out of the way. We got it done. It's good. We're all the cornerstones. Broncos fandom. We just we just pulverized them into little little bits. <laughs> and just blew them into history. <laughs> Thanks, Vance Joseph. Thanks for all that you've done for us. Thanks, John Elway, for <laughs> helping that along. Bye. Well. So here, here was uh, from Twitter a question. What if the Broncos stopped a wide receiver named Timmy Smith? Uh, Do you think Timmy he means Smith, a running, running back? back. Had, yeah. Now, here's the thing. He had 200 yards oh, rushing, it? but only one touchdown. Uh-oh. I'm frozen again. You're, we can still hear you. You look deep in thought, Jess. Yeah. Was that, that was, which, um, was that that 1990 Super Bowl, right? 1987 against the, against Washington. Or 87. Yeah. Is it, is it doing it? Can we can hear you, We Jess. can hear you. <laughs> it's that, it's that yeah. internet you got out there in the woods. <laughs> but, I mean, Timmy Smith only had one touchdown they lost by 35 points or whatever was it yeah. 42 to 10 maybe 32 maybe points for that first one we'd be better yeah. <laughs> I don't know. you could just reply okay, say they would lose 35 to 10 <laughs> uh, i'm gonna respond to him <laughs> tell him that's what you said Yeah. Oh no, right. we lost Jess. He's gone. Oh no. Come on. How does Je- how do we always lose Jess? He's always the one that freezes. Uh he's going back in now. Let me find I'm like all messed up here. Well, so while you're figuring that out, here's my other Manning related question. Hi which guys. Is... I'm back. <laughs> Welcome Hello, back. Jess. I missed you all so much. We do have one more question from from you, Lori. Well, I mean, this is mine is I feel like it's a sort of a domino effect. But if Gary Kubiak doesn't decide to put Peyton Manning in the game when Brock Osweiler was struggling in that very last, you know, week 17 game against the Chargers in 2015. Well, the game ended up being 2016, but that 2015, 2016 year. I'm I'm really curious if he would have still put in Manning in the playoffs, um, and even if I I don't think we win that game, he, and so then we don't get home field advantage, and then we go to New England and we don't win the Super Bowl. Here, yeah, here's my theory yeah. on on this whole thing. Brock Osweiler wasn't struggling in that game. His all of his passes were on point. They were people were dropping them and then they would get picked like. People were fumbling. I almost feel like the team sabotaged Brock no. Osweiler. Oh my goodness, what a conspiracy theory! I'm just saying. <laughs> they weren't okay. I, I will to I will get Peyton back in the they game. They weren't playing their best football, and when Manning came in, it was like, okay, now we really have to like clean it up, and and, and they yeah. did participate. They, and they did. did. They so, whooped the Chargers' so, ass. <laughs> yeah, like that's a, like to me that kind of thing. That was a a really key decision by Kubiak that. There was no guarantee, you know, like not that any there is ever a guarantee, but that was a, a gamble, big time gamble. As a coach, and it worked out so well. As a coach, I'd rather go down swinging with Peyton Manning, even a broken Peyton Manning, than Brock Osweiler. I, in the exactly, playoffs. and and that's what. But you know that that was kind of like even even though the crowd was like kind of 
getting frustrated with Osweiler, at least with the Broncos offense. And then when Peyton, Man- you know, our, our home crowd can be, is so fickle. So well, then Peyton Manning seen- comes in and they, they're going crazy. We had seen Osweiler like blow it against the Steelers and the Raiders already. So we right. kind of knew what was coming. And so we had no patience. They just that. came off a win over the Bengals though. And he was, his passes were on point. He was not struggling in that game. So he, but he was, and and it, his weakness showed up that which is Manning's strength, which is just that ability to dissect Rally. the defense. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, well, I, Tim, Tim and I both said rally. We did. Here's here's one that's current events uh, from the comments in the post on Mile High Report. Uh, what if Drew Locke didn't get a chance last year and the team was still looking for a QB all off season, not knowing what they had? Ugh, that would I'd suck. Be, yeah, <laughs> See, wait, wait, I, would, I would be like the, despondent. Yeah, that's that's. Re, what was the question again? What if we, Drew Lock didn't get a chance and we didn't know what we had in them and we were still looking for a QB, a veteran QB well, and free agent? Well, let me tell you, if Cam that had Newton, happened, welcome to Denver. It came full circle. <laughs> oh my god, we wouldn't have. I don't know. I bet we would have drafted Herbert. That's what I think. So we wouldn't yeah, have. But, Jerry but Judy. Herbert's not going to start in, in San Diego. So um, if you think about it, like even if we did draft Herbert, Cam Newton would make a lot of sense. Just even from like a two-year deal. Yeah. Even, I, don't, I don't know if you, he'd probably looking for more than two I years, don't think but. Elway would, I don't think he'd draft Cam Newton. I mean, uh, trade for him or sign him. I don't, yeah, I think... that'd be tough, right? Having Vaughn and Cam. I think Vaughn likes Cam. There's no animosity. Yeah, yeah. I don't think think? Vaughn likes everyone. It would be no big deal. I think Cam would have the issue with Vaughn because I don't think so. You don't think so? I I don't. They're big. They're big personalities. Like Elway would have an issue with Cam's nonsense. What nonsense does Cam have? I don't. Am I missing news articles? Cam Newton. He's like he is such a whiny baby. Just dresses press conferences. Oh. He does dress odd, and it's always it's always a factor. Big fan. I, I like the way he dresses. Is it a factor? I don't know if it's a factor. I mean, it's a factor. Used to, used it becomes to an issue. It becomes a question always, and and it's like a distraction. I think he likes to wear his grandmother's clothes. I mean, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever anyone wants to do. I'm happy. Hey, you be you. Whatever makes you happy. I, I don't care. So, quick question, Jess. What was the Broncos' like call sign for 2015? Iron. Uh, uh, yeah, iron sharpens iron. Kicking and screaming. Guess yeah, iron sharp sharpens iron. So I looked. I I went to Cam Newton's Twitter page. And mm. He's got hashtag iron sharpens iron in his Twitter bio. Oh, he must have seen the America's game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, keep pounding, Cam. <laughs> oh, God, yes. I don't. I don't have any bad feelings about Cam. I just, I, it, it hit, the way he ended the the his press conference after they lost, like where he stomps off, like I mean, that, I mean that made, that gave me like extra like two years of my life just because <laughs> I enjoyed it so much. But um, well, he was sitting there listening that. to Chris Harris Jr. Chris talk Harris, shit. Yeah. <laughs> he's a terrible he's a terrible passer we knew what he was going to do it before he even did it <laughs> if Coney Ely hadn't intercepted that pass they wouldn't have even been in it no, I, don't, I don't know if you mentioned that but, um, oh, I'm going to have to go rewatch Super Bowl 50 now that was fun it was on just was, the other day you yeah. know, I don't have TV. I think I've mentioned this before but if you rewatch Super Bowl 50 you have to watch watch the um, watch the like the whole season in review version where they go through because it is like it's oh, I've just watched that on more YouTube. It's amazing that Super Bowl is even more amazing when you see how we got to it. Unbelievable. Yeah. I'm ready for another one. Let's. Oh, let's I've got to do, do that. Greatest Broncos of twenty. Uh, greatest Broncos games of 2010s. I'm right in. Just about to hit 2014, 15, 16. So. Mm-hmm. I should get that started. Because here's another again. question: What if the Broncos stuck with Orton in 2011? Uh, well, and then he said, "I'll answer it." Broncos finished four and twelve. No exciting playoff win. No way does Peyton come to Denver, and who knows when the next Super Bowl run happens? <laughs> well, because uh, we would have had Tim Tebow. We don't lose to the Chiefs in that December game. 
2011 was fun. It was, yeah. it was the most fun, worst season I've ever watched. <laughs> if, you, if, if, you, if you were a fan who likes to watch the last three minutes of a football game, that was the season for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, what if what if the Broncos don't beat the Steelers in that playoff win? We would not have Tim Tebow conversations every freaking year that go well, into like, debate after debate after debate. With, 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 with be, like you're able to to make a better case to Peyton Manning to come to Denver by saying, "Look, we want a playoff game with this guy." Like, come on, like we can we can make some noise here. Oh, I said, so, well, exactly, which was the point of this. Uh, it was Jason Alt. What, you know, you don't get Peyton Manning if you don't have that. But I'm saying you also don't have the Tim Tebow love <laughs> that we have to deal with every year too. I love the Tim Tebow love. So <laughs> you know what I, I love it. is that is that it's 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 packaged up neatly. It ended at the right time, and it, it did was wonderful. While it was yeah, it it's was like, like a perfect little yeah, capsule of greatness in a little tiny. If only box. Tim Tebow had realized that. <laughs> I wish he didn't leave. I wish. What if he stays and plays fullback? Like, well, right. That's what I'm saying. If Tim end, Tebow you know? would have realized he's more of a fullback than a quarterback, man, he really would. Have been. He, he would probably be in the Hall of Fame. The fullback. Now your Did, internet's going out. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. How the tables have turned. <laughs> You're back. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, you went, you went digital. You went full robot on us. <laughs> I thought, oh, nice. I thought, I thought nice. we were listening to Cher there for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any more, Tim? Do we have any more? What? Else? Um, I just somebody on Twitter just said, "What if Michael Dean Perry sprints off the field?" I just replied to him with an angry Wolf of Wall Street GIF and moved move about my day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jerk. I'm surprised we didn't get the Raheem Moore question, but I mean everybody yeah. knows what if that bullshit. Didn't yeah, happen. yeah. But I don't know. I think the most difficult one was mine because who freaking knows what could have would have happened if Elway never went to the Broncos? Because he's so like, like I, half the freaking franchise history has to do with him. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it just. That's a that was a if, dumb if one. Edgar Kaiser wasn't drinking buddies with uh, Jim Ursay, it never would have happened. I know. Well, here's Isn't that one. Funny? What if what if Pat Bolin doesn't buy the Broncos? That would suck because Pat Bolin created the culture we all love about the Broncos. Well, exactly. I mean, we're, we're a different, we're a whole different kind of team, perhaps. Oh, and somebody's... not maybe one that that kind of really attracted a lot of players because of the, how well he treated players. Tim, you, you've got, you've got a live one. Yeah. Somebody said, what if the Broncos had drafted Thurman Thomas in the 1988 NFL draft? When was he even drafted? And who did we take? Is that probably? Well, oh, in the 1988, second round. You, you're saying, right? Yeah. yeah but 1988. I don't even, I don't so the know. Broncos drafted Ted Gregory. Nose tackle. Oh, yeah. Who An never played. Bust. Infamous bust. So Dan Reeves, they drafted him because he was listed as 6'1", 3-something, and he got to camp and was 5'9". <laughs> There's just, no joke. We're, yeah, if they drafted Thurman Thomas that year, they win multiple Super Bowls, I think. Yeah. The running back was yeah. what they were missing in the That's 90s. That's a good question. That was a good question. Yeah. Instead of instead of like the the Bobby Humphrey, Sammy Winder, <laughs> Gaston Green era, like Gene <laughs> uh, Lang kind of, uh, I saw Gene Lang. He doesn't get enough credit. Uh, I saw him on the uh, today they were showing the fumble on NFL Network, and I was like, oh, there's Gene Lang. Like there, is, no one ever talks about Gene Lang, <laughs> the running back. Like <laughs> no. no like I mean, there's like there's like Cecil Sapp and then Gene Lang, <laughs> and that's saying something. Oh, yeah. here's one more here. I got one more, and then we'll close it off because this is a good one. Just came in on the uh, post on Mile High Report. Uh, what if Von Miller, Chris Harris Jr., and Ryan Clady all were healthy and played in the Super Bowl in 2000? We win. We I totally think so win. too. We win that game. 
because I think a lot they of their a lot of their pent up anxiety was the fact that they were down so many other star players, and they knew they would have to play their best game, yeah. and they'd also yeah. need to replace their center because that yeah. guy who and snaps a ball sixty one, yards. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really feel like we like we probably do. Well, but here, now that's interesting because if we do win that one, John Fox stays on as coach. I'm, I'm sure. Well, he stayed on for 2014, and that was when he got fired. And so. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. Right. So I mean, and and that's when Jack Del Rio was was already like putting on his Raiders gear at halftime during the Colts playoff <laughs> game. He's just like, ah, guys, like I, I gotta go. I've got, I've got to go lead this team to a to their first winning record ever and then the rest you know consistent terrible. but here's now you can close on this if the broncos win that super bowl i never would have written a blog about the broncos and i never would have joined mhr so we well, can that would all be suck happy. <laughs> and where would we be now where would we be <laughs> it's true oh boy oh well, i'm glad you did i'm glad you did all right, what... I remember. I remember when Tim came in uh, into our our little Slack chat or, or whatever it was at the time, uh, and was like, uh, you know, you know that girl that wrote Dear Mr. Manning, or was, no, it was Kyle. It was Kyle. It was that, Kyle. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 she's she's coming on, and I was like, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Wow. I know. No. Was I the first female? Yeah, you were. Well, no, there was one. There was one other. Uh, and she never wrote anything. She was on the staff and she was on the masthead, but we never saw her and she never wrote anything. So, um, but that, I think so she technically, came out. yes, Amy. I think I think she came we had, out. We had a, we had oh, no, um, Amy. Kelly no, Amy and Amy. Yeah. No, it okay. was. Th this is like. This is after you though. This this is this is like a long time ago. Like I don't even remember, uh, and I was probably here, so that's you, how. You've already been banned, Tim. Oh. <laughs> you've been <laughs> double triple triple IP perma banned. <laughs> So yeah, this is yeah. There was uh, there there was uh, these two folks that never did anything. We got <laughs> we got one more just uh, on Twitch. Baragon eight hundred one. What if Shanahan didn't bench Plummer in two thousand six and he ended up taking the Broncos to the playoffs instead of the Cutler era starting? What happens then? Does Cutler still take over in two thousand seven? You think? I think Mike Shanahan was done with Plummer, even if he kept winning. I think he would have yeah. made the switch anyway. I, yeah. And I think Plummer might have been done with. <laughs> I think he was done yeah. with well, Shanahan. <laughs> he was, yeah. It, if you it, there's a there's this great book by Stephen Fatsis uh, called "A Few Seconds of Panic" and uh, where he becomes a kicker in the uh, in the preseason of Cutler's first year, and uh, and and he taught he talked to uh, Jake Plummer and and he's like, and you can quote me, Mike Shanahan can kiss my mother. <laughs> it's an actual quote in the book and i'm just like oh. yeah. <laughs> so there's there's no love lost there for sure they may have repaired it since but but in, 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 that's a great moment in that book where he's like and you can write this down but you didn't kiss my God, i love it i really I wish it. his era had been a little more successful just because he deserves it I was, it was pretty it was more successful than others. So I, was... yeah, I know. And I, and I think because though it kind of where it fell and because it, it, I think it gets obviously gets overshadowed obviously by Manning and Elway's careers, but it gets because of the way it, you know, became Cutler and because of the drama with Cutler, I think we, we just kind of forget some of what, how great Summer was. No, uh -oh, we're losing Lori again. She's, Oh. She's believing in life after love. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Oh. I'm here. Well, let's let's put a fork in it. Let's call it. Uh, you've been listening to something something Broncos. I am Jess Place, joined by Tim Lynch and Lori Lattimore Volkman. We are all contributors on MileHighReport.com, your one-stop shop for news, information, stats, uh, history from the 1960s, uh, <laughs> and all sorts of other things uh, that uh, are Broncos related that you are going to love. Fashion advice, for example. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so feel free to click on over uh, check us out listen to other podcasts we've got a whole network of podcasts that can be found wherever you get your podcasts spotify uh, the, the apple thing the uh, <laughs> iheart thing they're they're everywhere we, we are everywhere just say say play me mile high report 
podcast and and it just goes it just happens and so um you know we usually publish on thursdays uh except for when it comes on fridays saturdays or sometimes mondays or tuesdays or never not at all never wednesdays <laughs> do not try to listen to us on wednesdays because we will not be there <laughs> maybe <laughs> so, go broncos thank you, thank you for listening uh go broncos and um what if john elway had never been a bronco and four looks into the nickel of San Francisco in the secondary. Hey, somebody has run out on the field. Some goofball in a hat and a red shirt. Now he takes off the shirt. He's running down the middle by the 50. He's at the 30. He's bare chested and banging his chest. Now he runs the opposite way. He runs at the 50. He runs at the 40. The guy is drunk, but there he goes. The 20. They're chasing him. They're not going to get him. Waving his arms, bare chested. Somebody stop Look that out. man. Here comes the blue coat. Oh, Kevin. they got him. Here comes coming the blue from the coat. Left. Oh, and they tackle him at the 40 yard line. Oh, that was the most exciting thing to happen tonight. I tell you what, that was a great call on your part. <laughs> that was a great call. All right, I'm ready for the last 11.31 now, Kevin. Let's go. Look at the police. They've surrounded this man like he is... <laughs> like he... Like he's just robbed a bank. I tell you what, he got a whole lap in he before did, they yes. got him. I mean, that was, that was pretty good. I expected him to go down much sooner. Yeah. But uh, I hope it was worth it, my friend, because you've got a night in the clink coming up. 